Yeah. How do you come up with a character named Kermit the Frog and give him that kind of personality? Yeah. Like that uh-huh. one. And then how does he come up with a pig being his love interest? Yeah. That one, I piggy? that one I don't know if I want to know the answer to. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe we'll find out. I don't know. Welcome to another edition of Popcorn Bucket List, and congrats to the Timberwolves for winning Game Five. Hey, get game one. Five got one. I, I mean, it's it's that is either going to age really, really well or really, really poorly because this comes out on Thursday. We're recording yep. Wednesday. They've only won Game Four, yep. so in about twenty four hours, a little bit more than that, we're going to yep. know whether or not I'm right or wrong on that. Maybe I should record a separate one where I'm <laughs> like, uh, "Good luck, try again next year," and then like. Yeah replace it later whatever on. one so, yeah so uh congr- sorry timberwolves you had a good year there we go now we're covered now we're right, good we got we got both of them now just in case uh yeah so it's a little bit of a slower week here this week probably one of the slower weeks i've ever seen in a movie weekend i yeah. feel like there's just not any big premieres nothing. we're gonna talk about a few here in a little bit but nothing really to talk about as far as opening spotlight so i figured this would be the time to uh bring up one of my greatest failures, once again, here. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, well, just to kind of recap here, um, early this year, the fourth annual Oscar challenge between the two of us took place. It is where we try and guess the most amount of Oscar winners mm-hmm. correctly. Um, I won the first two years. Mr. Marburg won the last two years. Crushed. Crushed. <laughs> I'm going to buy you a thesaurus maybe, or <laughs> dictionary definition, figure out what crushed actually means. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, Ryan did meet me. Thus, he had the job of coming up with a movie-themed challenge. Uh, why, why don't you – Why don't you? I'll give you the satisfaction. Right. Why don't you tell him what the, the challenge or the punishment ended up being? Yeah, so we give Nick a lot of crap because he's never watched any of the Lord of the Rings films. That That's not true. I saw The uh, the Last Hobbit. The Hobbit doesn't count. And that's, I, I watched the first one, that, that and then doesn't, I stopped. The Hobbit doesn't count as the Lord yeah, of the but Rings But I did trilogy. watch the first one. first one's so good. This is awesome. I mean, notice how I said I only watched the first one and that's not true, the second or the third one. But. So, for the punishment, we um, sat down and watched all three. I would say probably over oh, two weeks, three weeks, three weeks. Yeah, yeah. We did yeah, like each, each weekend. Each weekend yeah. yeah. Um, so enough time. And they were the extended editions, not the, the jabroni regular theatrical runs, which are still amazing, but the theatrical run, or the extended editions far better. Um, so yeah, we got to sit down and watch it. I, we all had a blast. It was awesome. It was fantastic. Yeah. They're so long. They're very long. I they forgot how so long they are. so long. I usually watch them once every year, once every two years. But also, because I've seen them so much, I don't mind doing something else while I'm while it's on. But actually just sitting there and watching them. Um, they don't make movies like that anymore. And it's this a shame. Good, there's a good reason for it, I would it's say. It's a shame. Um, yeah, so we didn't like record my full reaction to the whole thing, but every once in a while we would take a break and I recorded a few captain's logs. Yep. Best way to kind of call it here. So, uh, I'll, uh, I've edited those together and, uh, well, you can all, um, you can all enjoy them now. So enjoy my torment. Uh, yeah, captain's log, uh, just to update you, I'm officially now doing the punishment, I guess, from last year's Oscar challenge where Ryan beat me, where he's showing me the Lord of the Rings trilogy extended editions, and, uh, just got back from a back bathroom break because I thought we were halfway, I don't, I don't know, we're maybe a third into the first one here. Look, I'm gonna be honest, I, I did try to go in with a little bit more of an open mind with these, but I just... We haven't even met the fellowship yet. Yeah, we haven't even met the we haven't even met the reason for the title of the movie yet. So, we know there's a ring. So I guess and that there's people hunting them. Yeah, there's people there's people hunting them. So, let's just keep going. One eternity later. One down. Two more. Two more to go. Look, it's not bad. I gotta give credit. The acting is great. Um, I 
it's sunny. We got a companion here. I don't know if that caught it or not. The acting's great. Like, Peter Jackson does do a really good of the best he could at the time of combining visual and practical effects, all that. Three hour movie, and like 80% of it was set up. Yep. Like, I could have skipped an hour and a half and still known what was going on. It's true. Like, but the payoff is going to be great. Is it, though? It is. It's worth it. I guess we'll find out. Two more to go. Jesus Christ. All right. Here we are. It's uh, round two. We got, we got Sonny right there. He's sure she's joining us. Mr. Meyerberg, guy who dragged me into this. Yeah, so we've already, we've watched the first one. That was about, what, three and a half? Mm-hmm. And uh, we're about to start Two Towers, which, uh, when we last checked, was about four hours. I regret doing the Oscars challenge at this point. You, you said you said there's more action in this one, right? There's more action, and a lot of the memes that come out of this come from this one. Since I've watched that first one, my Facebook feed has flooded with Lord of the Rings memes. And I get half the references. I'm hoping to get the other half of them by the end of this, so... All right, let's, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Four hours. Oh, my gosh. Many unbearable hours later. All right. Uh, Captain's log. Um, two down, one more to go. I, I don't know the runtime of the third one here. And so we're going to, I'm basically going to live react to it here. So it's Return of the King. That's, that's the, the title of the third one here. You ready? Yeah. Why do they keep getting longer, man? How much more could they fit into this? Am I reading that right? Does that say four hours and 24 minutes? That's right. Why? They won. They pretty much won. How do they? They're like halfway there. What? Yeah, it's... Okay, no, I get it now. It's four hours and 24 minutes. You need a whole other movie to set up the last movie. Yep. That's how it works. It's set up. Set up, set up. <sighs> okay. Um, I mean, pretty much the same thoughts I had, I guess, on the first one. Um, yeah, the, the digital effects, you, you could definitely tell were more early 2000s, but there definitely was more focus on the, the Gollum character, and it showed, the effort showed there, so I thought that was pretty good. I only went to the bathroom technically twice for this movie. Yeah, so just twice. I, so I'm uh, I'm I'm pretty proud of myself on that one. So we'll have to see how many times I have to go for a four hour and twenty four twenty four minute. One. That's half a work day. That's over half. A that's work over. Day. That's a work day and lunch. Yeah, and it's all awesome. It's just pure cinema gold. Here we are, round three, uh, final movie. This one just short of an hour and a half, or three, or four and a half hours. Um, yeah, first two. I'm Okay, so I've got to be honest. Going into this one, I'm a little worried. Because it felt like the final battle was at the end of the second one. I, I'm worried if how they're going to top it or, and if, if it's, if it's going to be too much or not. So, I don't know. What time is it? Like, quarter after eight, something like that? That's time, so we'll have to... We'll be back in like four hours. Here we go. Thousands of tears later. All right, we've uh, we've done it. Final movie in the books. Final thoughts. I guess essentially this is. I kind of, we kind of do short reviews yep. of uh, a lot of the themes we see in the movie. I guess this is essentially a short review of uh, three and one. Overall, I I see the appeal. Like the acting is great. The action is great. Uh, the mix of practical and digital effects, especially in the first one, is really, really good, especially for the time. So I get the appeal. I get the grandiose nature of this. I, I get the fandom. I'm just not in the fandom. So I guess personally, I, I, I don't hate it. I like them. Overall, I, I, I would say I like them. And I get it. I get why they're such a big deal. I see, I see what Peter Jackson is doing, 100%. So at the end of the day, I do have to call these really, really great movies. Even though I don't personally like them, again, I'm, I mean, I've said this before, 
I'm a sci-fi guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. You, you've heard me talk about that. But I, I can see this and I can see all the work that went into it. I mean, the extended, you don't need to make a movie over four hours long. I mean, that's just, that's ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know about that. But uh, overall, I get it. Uh, this didn't convert me into the fandom, but I get it. I 100% get it. So, yeah. How many hours later? And, uh, punishment completed, right? That's right. Or you square. completed it. Or square. That counts as two. That counted as two. He owed me for two years. That counted as two. Yep. And I would say, if you haven't seen them, if you like longer films, you have to watch the extended versions. If you have not, you can get by with the short ones. But I wanted Nick to see the extended ones to see everything. And we did see everything. So then what happened after that? Well, I don't even know how the diaper ended up on the roof, but then... I've, I've... Guys... We're, we're live. Oh, we're back. Oh, we're back. Oh, okay. Okay, oh. cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So yeah, that was, uh, that was my experience. Um, okay. So I just want it on record here. You, you've beaten me two years. Correct. You never punished me the first time. Correct. Because you made me watch three extended edition movies. I think it's fair. That counts as two. I'll, I'll, I'll I will say we are squared up. After we're this. square. We're all square. right. So you've won two years in a row. I've won two years in a row. Oh, man, I cannot wait for next year. I know it's going to be awesome. I've already screenshot. They've already announced when like the next year ceremony is. is I've got it like screenshot on my yeah. phone. I cannot wait <laughs> to come back. I I just want to see some good movies come out before then. No, don't don't play that. <laughs> don't play that whole. I'm just here for the fun co of competition. No, I will. Destroy I'm here for you. the movies. I will destroy you. Every Oscar movie that comes out is just another reminder of vengeance and victory vengeance. that shall be mine. We'll Call me Batman, because we'll I'm see. vengeance, baby. We'll see. My new nickname is Robert Pattinson. Are any, I'm vengeance. Do you think any movies have coming out came out so far that we've seen lately are going to be up for any Oscars? At least like the big Oscars. Maybe not some of the documentary uh, ones or it's anything. It's too early. I, I can't even... Yeah, I can't really Well, think. Dune Part 2 probably should get more recognition, yeah. but it will probably get digital effects. Yeah. I'd like to see it get cinematography. I think it'll get that. Yeah. Um, or at least be up for it, yeah. Yeah, I, I would like to see it get in some supporting actor noms. I just feel like it's going to be too competitive to see Timothy Chalamet get it. Yeah. I'd like to see Zendaya get one. I highly doubt that's going to happen, though. Maybe she'll get one for Challengers. She's probably not going to get one. Oh, right, Brett, I got probably not going to get one for <laughs> Challengers, <laughs> Um All right, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Is there any you can think of that you think might? <clears throat> no, off the top of my head, no. Dune yeah, it's, was it's, really good. It's too early. Um, I feel like. Yeah, I I don't know. Like I remember all the hype. I mean, we got to remember Mad Max Fury Road won like five. That is handful. true. Do we Furiosa, think? Yeah, that would, might get something, but they don't have that stunt one in there yet. Yeah. That so is like, true. whether or not practice like the visual effects department. Because um, remember how they are changing that. So, or so whatever. basically, what we're trying to say here is, if your movie is set in the desert this year, you got a yeah, good chance yeah, of getting chance. some Oscars. I think. I agree. Yeah, I agree. It's been a very sandy year. Anakin Skywalker would hate this year movie so far, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah it would. definitely would. Yeah, it would. All right, yeah. So, like I said, <laughs> that's pretty much that's pretty much all we got here for the opening spotlight. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode here this week. Um, I don't know. Let's. Uh, Let's just get right into the weekly Let's preview roll. then. There's not too much to talk about here. Again, very slow week for May. Yeah. Like a very, I mean, I get it, Memorial Day weekend and everything. Obviously, that's a big one. But usually there's like one or two other kind of blockbustery ones. Yeah. I think this is just the downtime until June. Like you think June's going to kind of pick up again? Yeah. I think so. Because it's been a little bit of a slower box office this month in general of May. Yeah, it has. According to some experts. And... I, I see where they're coming from, but the thing I found the most, I guess we're going to kind of get into a box office tangent here because we have to sit down here for more than 30 minutes. Otherwise, we have to pay rent. <laughs> um, I guess the uh, the thing that I found the most interesting is that not that there have been weekends that have been slow, but the weekends that have been slow is what's been most fascinating to me. And the weekends that have been good are the ones that generally don't do good. Yeah. You had the first week of May. That's the kickoff to summer. This is it. This is the first big blockbuster, the one that's supposed to start it all. And you had a really good contender with Fall Guy. And it did 
all right, okay. but it didn't make gangbusters. No. You had two very bankable stars. There was plenty of promotion. Mm-hmm. And then the next week, all of a sudden, it was like Planet of the Apes did great, but not as good as it wanted to. Yep. And then the week after that, it did really, really good, good but no one saw that one coming. Yeah. And then you had Memorial Day weekend, one of the biggest box office weekends. You had Furiosa. You had a huge action movie. And I read an article saying this was the slowest Memorial Day box office since 1995. Yeah. Yeah, it's it was bad. And you had Garfield, a kid's movie. Yeah. Uh, any sort of kid's movie does usually it's, gangbusters. It's just weird to me how the weekends that were supposed to do good didn't do good, but the weekends that were usually the ones where it's like, ah, it was slower, but we expect that did great. Yeah. Like, I that's the part I can't figure out. Yeah. It's goofy. I don't know. Riddle me that. Riddle me that. Riddles. I don't know. Okay, that's enough of that tangent here. Uh, let's talk about some of the movies that are coming out here this weekend. Probably not going to turn the tide in the box office no. battle here, but uh, some good ones, I would say. Uh, first things first, Friday, May 30th, Ezra coming to limited theaters. Um, inspired by a true story from what I could tell, loosely based on one of the writers of this film's real-life experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, the movie is about a boy named Ezra who has autism. His stand-up comedic uh, father tries to, to uh, juggle taking care of this kid while being separated from his wife and also trying to uh, you know, further his comedic career and everything like that. Uh, it's got one heck of a cast. Uh, Rose Byrne, Robert De Niro, Bobby uh, Cannavale, whom I've always said is a very underrated actor. Yeah. Um, yep. I don't know. What do, we, what do we think of this one? Uh, it was funny because when I first saw the title, I was like, oh, is this a documentary piece on the fall of Ezra Miller? <laughs> and then I looked at it and I was sad because it was like, oh, no, it's not. And then it was, oh, this actually looks really good. Like, it's, it looks like a very good, heartwarming story. That was, that was the thing I noticed, too, is just, I don't know if my description really does it justice. It sounds very Oscar baity. But if you watch the trailer, I mean, you can tell one of the writers had this experience. Yeah. There is clearly heart in this. Yeah. Um, and there's conflict and there's relatable conflict. Mm. And I think that's the toughest part to nail sometimes. Yeah. And I think since Bobby is playing a stand up comedian and he's naturally a funny guy, I think there will be some really good humor in there along with all of the the sadness. He he is a naturally funny guy. You've probably seen him in uh, some Adam Sandler, Kevin James productions, yep. everything like that. But he has done a little bit of dramatic stuff. That part just hasn't been as portrayed or seen as well. Mm-hmm. So that is the part that I'm most looking forward to. Hopefully, seeing more and more people acknowledge that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think he's going to do a really good job balancing both for sure. Mm-hmm. Um. Also coming out here this weekend, Summer Camp. Also coming to theaters, a summer comedy movie. With summer in the title, so already off to a good start there. Great. Great marketing. Yeah. I mean, I say that jokingly, but we've talked about a movie called Mother's Day that came out in October. So. True. True. So it's not that hard to market sometimes, people. It really <laughs> isn't. Um, this place, uh, this takes place in a summer camp uh, reunion. Uh, I've worked at a summer camp for a couple of years. Never heard of anything like that. Yep. It's not real. We've done staff reunions. Where like the staff will get together like a day in the off like season, whatever. Um, and it's not just ours. Like I've never heard from any of the other summer camps we've worked with that they do like a a, a uh, camper reunion. Like the campers come back yeah. thirty years later and like yeah, reunite. Weird. Yeah, it's it weird. is weird. Okay, it's I'm weird. glad you said that. I was hoping I yeah. wasn't the only one. Nope. That's that's odd. Yeah. I mean, you either just stay in contact or you don't, I guess. Yeah. But, all right, whatever. That's the premise. That's how they've set it up. Yeah. Comedy, does it ensue here? Don't know. I think there's moments. I, I think that'll be funny. If if Kathy Bates can successfully knock somebody's foot out of place, I will be thrilled with this movie. Or there's some joke yeah. about that. I would love that. Yeah. Ex- explain to the people kind of... I think I know uh, what you're referencing yes. there, but... If you haven't seen... It's a the, very specific reference. The film Misery. Yeah. Check it out. Uh, Kathy Bates puts a log... I can't remember the actor's name. In between his legs, like ankles. And then she takes a sledgehammer and breaks his ankle. It's awesome. It's wild. If they find a way to sneak that in, that'll be the sneak greatest... Sneak something that'll in That'll be or, the greatest joke. Or like uh, somebody's walking and they fall and they split their ankle and she says, oh seen that before something like that if they could sneak in that easter egg that'd be the greatest that'd be the greatest for sure 
Um, yeah, it, as you mentioned, stars Kathy Bates, also uh, Diane Keaton and uh, Alfre uh, Woodward. Wood Woodard, sorry. Um, it, yeah, majority of it does look cheesy. I do think there's a few jokes that are going to land here, though. Yeah. Specifically and, the Kathy, and I, Kathy Bates I, ones. Yeah, and I think um, if you are a little bit older generation than us, I think you'd probably really enjoy this movie. I was gonna so, say, I'm pretty sure it's the same producers as the book club movies. Yeah. Seems like the same kind of vibe there. Yeah. And I'm so, sure they have their audience. Like, I'm sure it'll be fine. But Yeah, book club two, I think, did pretty well when that came out last year. Yep. Good enough. Remember. Good enough, I think. Um, But finally... Last one we're going to talk about here. This is actually the one I'm most looking forward to. I've been looking forward to this one for quite a while now, actually. Mm -hmm. Jim Henson, Idea Man, coming straight to Disney+. Plus, A documentary that covers the life and career of Jim Henson. If you don't know the name, you definitely know his work. Uh, creator of The Muppets, Sesame Street. He did the Dark Crystal movie, Labyrinth. Um, pretty much anything in puppeteering in the entertainment industry. He's, he's done. Or he's had the a, guy. Had literally a hand in. Oh, oh, huh? Uh, uh, that was a good one. That was a good one. I hate myself. <laughs> yeah, like I said, talks about Jim Henson. I think he's one of the most inventive creators. I don't even know if I could compare him to someone. Yeah, it's it's such a, a unique skill and. Um, like creativity that he brought and this looks really good like a very well done well made well researched well produced well shot all of it it's gonna be good yeah speaking of producer ron howard who has uh, done quite and produced quite a bit of documentaries he's part mm -hmm. of this one as well and with ron howard you can always tell he's he's got that love that childhood innocence mm -hmm. love of film and creativity and that's kind of what Jim Henson was. So I, you can tell there was a lot of love in making this documentary and making it right. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, he's he's done so much for so many years. He even worked with SNL there for a little while. Kind of early on, they would do some puppet bits or something yeah. like that. I mean, it didn't last long, but I mean, he's had quite a, quite a bit to do with the entertainment industry. So I'm very much looking forward to this one. I want to see if I can learn more about mm -hmm. him. And about just him in general, some of his process, where some of his ideas came from. Like, I want to know. I want to know how Kermit came to be. Yeah. How do you come up with a character named Kermit the Frog and give him that kind of personality? Yeah. Like that one. Know. And then, how does he come up with a pig being his love interest? Yeah. That and one I'd Peggy. That one I don't know if I want to know the answer to. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe we'll find out. I don't know. But let's wrap up this episode here. Like I said, a little bit of a shorter one here with some number one recommends. Um, why don't you go first? I think I went first last week. So yeah. Um. So with my choice, I'm going to pick Furiosa. Da -da -da -da. Um. Uh. It's a sequel to the Mad Max. Um. I don't know. Are, is it going to be a f uh, trilogy? Do you think? Do you think they're gonna looking do at the box more? office numbers here from this last weekend? Probably not. I know. I I I, I, I did like it. The action was awesome. The story was great. It was good to see those characters. Um, it does give you a good like intro to. I don't want to say intro, um, but like if you were to watch this first and then watch Mad Max Fury Road after this, that might be the ideal way to watch it because I do think Mad Max was better. Um, but I did enjoy the set pieces. I did enjoy the acting. I did enjoy all the awesomeness. Um, it was very good. Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat as you. Mad Max Fury Road just edges it out just a little bit, but... I think what's better in this one is the world building. Yes, the world building was phenomenal. Because you other, don't really get anything from Fury no. Road other than there's a, a road and people are furious on it. Yeah. Here yep. you kind of figure out the layout of the land a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I think I think those two would be a great double feature. I would love to see them do a third one mm -hmm. set after Fury Road. Yeah. I, I Same thing. I would love it too. But there is a chance it still might happen. If they honestly, I think if Tom Hardy came back, um, and I think they had maybe more of the if Joe was in there quite a bit, if they had a night like if they could tease an actual fight, I think that would be. I think this next upcoming weekend, again, we're shooting this on a Wednesday after Memorial Day. 
this next coming weekend is going to be a really interesting telltale sign. If it can make a sort of second push in the box office mm -hmm. and it doesn't have a lot of competition, then I think that could make that dream a little bit more of a reality. Yeah. But if it doesn't do well, or even if it does just as much of the same, yeah, I, I don't know. As a studio, I don't know if you can green light that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, we'll have to wait and see, though. I'm curious. Um, mine is kind of a cheat recommend. I'm kind of stealing because I feel like Carter kind of mentioned our engineer up top there. He kind of mentioned this a couple weeks ago. Timberwolves still going strong. We joked about it at the beginning of the episode here. Uh, I am a I'm bandwagoning on this. Okay, let's I, go. I'll, I'll, Hop I'll on. fully admit it. Hop on. I'm fully going to admit it. I'm I'm jumping on the bandwagon. I reserve the right to jump off at any time. Mm -hmm. But they did finally win one in this series. Will they keep what? Come to the good side, Nick. <laughs> Is it? It feels like the dark side right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, and you know what? Regardless, even if they don't go any further, this is like the furthest they've been in like a couple decades. Mm -hmm. So I got to, you, you got to recommend them just because they've put in a lot of work. This team has put in a lot of work. If you're a Minnesota sports fan at all, if you want to hear a little bit more about it, I'm also going to, I didn't even plan this, check out our friends, Minnesota Sports Live. Callahan and uh, Voldy, they talk a lot about this. They've been covering this very well. So check out their thoughts uh, as well as we continue through the Rocky sports season that is a Minnesota sports season. Mm -hmm. They can never make it easy to do that. No, no, not at all. They just, they just can't. But uh, anyways, that is going to do it for us here on this episode of Popcorn Bucket List. Once again, check out our social media channels, um, Facebook and uh, Instagram, TikTok. That is where we post some other movie reviews, like right when we leave the theater, seconds after we are done watching a movie, we give our real thoughts and everything like that. Yep. So that way you can kind of get our recommendations a little bit early. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we talk about them. Obviously, we talk about Furiosa here, but that's like a week after. Yep. You could check out our thoughts right when we leave the theater, but only if you go check out those pages. For myself and Ryan Meinberg, I'd like to thank you so much for watching, and we will see you at the movies.